Hello and welcome to Lecture 5 of Aerospace Propulsion. Today we'll go over some high-level design considerations for internal combustion engines. These are not really specific to aerospace applications, but they certainly apply uh, in that application as well. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, air-fuel ratio and ignition timing, about the geometry of the combustion chambers uh, in the cylinders, the flow in the valves, uh, valve timing, and intake and exhaust ducting. So the air fuel mixture um, has an impact on the performance of the engine, as you might imagine. Uh, the parameter that's normally used to characterize the system is called equivalence ratio. Um, and it can vary by operating point in internal combustion engines. So an equivalence ratio of one means that the air fuel mixture is exactly that needed for a stoichiometric chemical reaction. And if the equivalence ratio is less than one, it means that there's extra fuel or it's fuel rich. And if it's less than one, it means that there's excess air or that it's fuel lean. And the choice of this parameter affects the specific fuel consumption as well as the mean effective pressure achieved uh, during the, the uh, engine operation. So here on this plot, we get a, a sort of qualitative look at this. Um, so the black curves represent sort of the performance of uh, an engine at wide open throttle at some constant speed um, and the red curves notionally show how these uh, would change when the, the throttle is partially closed. So at one we see stoichiometric here and so we have lean on this side, rich on this side um, and we see that as the uh, equivalence ratio changes the uh, uh, mean effective pressure um, first rises and maxes out at a slightly rich mixture and then begins to fall. Qualitatively, the same thing happens at a partially open throttle, but of course the mean effective pressure is lower. And um, this lower curve is the specific fuel consumption, and we see that we get a minimum of specific fuel consumption over here um, at something in the round 0.9 equivalence ratio, and then it rises on either side of that. So an important takeaway here is that the ideal equivalence ratio for performance or mean effective pressure and the ideal equivalence ratio for uh, fuel consumption minimization are not the same. And so it turns out that the ideal air fuel mixture is a function of the throttle position. So Basically, there's always going to be some equivalence ratio that minimizes fuel consumption at a given throttle position. And then at wide open throttle, we can take advantage of a slightly rich mixture to further increase the mean effective pressure at the, at the cost of, of rising fuel use. But there'd be no point in doing that at uh, throttle positions other than wide open. So again, here we have a constant speed performance. We have the mean effective pressure versus the fuel consumption now. And what we see is that there's a minimum of each of these sort of curves of varying equivalence ratio. Um, and so we, we would typically operate on this um, locus of these curves for minimum fuel consumption um, until we get to fully wide open throttle. And then here's maybe the minimum fuel consumption and we can get a little bit more mean effective pressure by making the mixture a little bit rich. So it's only at wide open throttle that we would actually deviate from whatever the um, equivalence ratio is for minimum fuel consumption um, because otherwise what we could do to get more mean effective pressure is simply open the throttle. Another important consideration is when to fire the spark plug in a spark ignition engine. Uh, so this is basically about ignition timing. So if we fire it too early, we'll get a low mean effective pressure because um, essentially uh, some of the work fr uh, from the expanding gases is just sort of fighting against the piston coming back up. And if we do it too late, uh, the air fuel mixture may auto ignite from compression, which is knock, which means you basically have an uncontrolled combustion event and typically get poor performance there as well. So again, here now we see uh, ignition timing um, so this uh, horizontal axis is the number of degrees before top dead center. So zero is that top dead center, sort of the end of the compression stroke. Um, and then we see uh, break mean effective pressure on the vertical axis. Um, 
And basically, again, um, at sort of a wide open throttle or a partially open throttle, we get sort of the same idea, but um, a compressed curve when the, the throttle is partially closed, as we've come to expect. Um, but basically what we see is that um, at a given speed, throttle and air fuel ratio, um, by just changing the ignition timing, um, we can vary the, uh, the mean effective pressure achieved. Um, but we don't want to get too close to this point of knock because um, we want to have some margin for safety here. So um, it's it would be common to have the uh, ignition occur a little bit before the absolute peak of this curve um, in order to provide sufficient knock margin. As we kind of saw, we saw there the effects on mean effect pressure, but also the timing strongly affects the peak cylinder pressure. So on a real engine, um, the PB diagram uh, clearly is going to depend on the ignition timing. And here's three options that you see. There's three um, cylinder pressure versus crank angle, which is pretty much the same thing as uh, cylinder pressure versus time, assuming constant rotational speed. Um, so we, you know, outside of you know, this range, they're all the same. But in this region um, around top dead center, they vary significantly. Um, and what I want you to try to think about is which of these three pressure traces might you expect to yield the most cycle work? So take a couple of minutes and think about this and try to come up with an answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.